Welcome to Recyclist. It's April 7th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy, presented by Diamond Scientific. First up, recycling your old electronics is about to become easier than ever. Best Buy is introducing a new nationwide easy-to-use program that allows you to recycle your old tech by mail. Starting this month, you can order a prepaid Best Buy technology recycling box in either 6 or 15 pound capacity to ship off your old electronics for recycling. The box arrives at your home. You fill it up with old gadgets lying around the house, whether it's a tablet, cords, keyboards, or more, and then you ship the prepaid box by taking it to the nearest UPS drop-off location or simply scheduling a pickup with UPS. Best Buy's Head of Environmental Sustainability, Tim Dunn, said, quote, We continue to build on our commitment to be there for our customers throughout the entire life cycle of their products by making recycling simple and convenient. Sustainability is at the forefront of everything we do, and this new service is another step we are taking to protect the planet today and for future generations, end quote. The program is available nationwide now. The highly anticipated eligibility requirements for the bonus credit in the Inflation Reduction Act that incentivized clean energy development in so-called energy communities have been released. The credit of up to 10% is an adder to the investment tax credit or the production tax credit for clean energy or energy storage project development. The Internal Revenue Service issued a notice on April 4th that defines three categories of energy communities. Number one must be a brownfield site. Number two, any community that has or had at least 0.17% direct fossil fuel employment or at least 25% local tax revenues from fossil fuels and an unemployment rate at or above the national average. And number three, any community in which a coal mine closed after December 31st, 2009. In addition to the guidance from the IRS, the Department of Energy released a brand new web tool to help stakeholders identify opportunities for redevelopment of energy communities and shuttered coal plants. The tool also outlines key infrastructure characteristics, including transmission lines, ports, substations, and railroads. Abigail Ross Hopper, CEO of the Solar Energy Industries Association trade group, commended the administration for including, quote, clear references to government data for qualifying areas, a 50% rule for projects to be located in an energy community, and a common sense rule for adjoining census tracts, end quote. A new study initiated by the Environmental Research and Education Foundation aims to advance our understanding of direct emissions measurement from landfills. The study aims to evaluate accuracy of measurement technologies by releasing methane at a known rate. This so-called controlled release of methane will then be measured by multiple technologies deployed simultaneously. Such a strategy allows for absolute quantification of accuracy under identical site conditions, which serves to minimize the site and atmospheric fluctuations. The approach will put participating technologies on the same playing field. Dr. Brian Staley, President and CEO of the Environmental Research and Education Foundation, said, quote, the work conducted in collaboration with St. Xavier University, waste management, and multiple emissions measurement technology providers will significantly advance the understanding of direct admissions measurement accuracy and functionality for landfills. Brian Tyndall, Vice President of Disposal Operations for Waste Management, said, Waste Management is pleased to be able to host this important study at one of our landfills. This work will produce valuable new insights regarding direct measurement of landfill methane emissions and aligns with our ongoing sustainability initiatives to develop a landfill emissions measurement system by 2025 and reduce our emissions by 42% by 2032. 
The field measurement campaign is expected to take place in summer 2023 with initial results by early 2024. In addition to this work, the EREF is also collaboratively engaging with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, universities, landfill owners, and other non-government organizations to aggregate data and create synergy with other efforts. In recycling news, the Carpet America recovery effort announced that the California Carpet Stewardship Program has achieved an absolutely unheard of carpet recycling rate of 33% for 2022. This far exceeds the 27% goal set in the program's five-year plan, and the California Carpet Recycling Rate has more than tripled since 2015. In addition to the recycling rate performance, in 2022, for the first time in its 11-year history, the California Carpet Stewardship Program achieved or surpassed all of the program's annual goals, including meeting the carpet reuse goal of 2 million pounds, achieving 76% recycling efficiency rate, passing the goal of 75%. Recycling efficiency refers to the amount of collected carpet that is transformed into recycled products or feedstock. Another goal that was passed is supporting 131 public drop-off sites with at least one in every California county, in addition to the over 200 private sites across the state. The program also increased its public drop-off site carpet collection by 33% over 2021 and supported some 100 products made from recycled carpet material. CARE Executive Director Bob Peoples hailed the success in the face of multiple challenges. Quote, less than two years ago, we were in jeopardy of losing the critical carpet recycling infrastructure that had been built by our hardworking and creative recyclers. As a result of CARE's Emergency COVID Action Plan implemented in April 2020, the program not only survived, but this amazing growth was made possible. This is thanks to the amazing group of passionate recyclers and a dedicated CARE staff working in partnership, end quote. And lastly, the American Biogas Council Board of Directors has announced the re-election of its officers, including incumbent chairman Bernard Sheff from Montrose Environmental Group, who was elected to a fifth term. In addition to Chef Brian Seavers of Seavers Family Farms and Roseland Alternative Energy and Randy Beck of Waste Management were re-elected as co-vice chairs. Melissa Van Orem of DVO was re-elected to treasurer. Dr. Craig Freer of Reginus was re-elected as secretary. And Patrick Surfass was re-elected as executive director. The 2023 board will have 27 directors, including newly elected Ivor Castellino, Managing Director of Corporate Development at Bloom Energy. And that has been your Recyclus News Roundup for April 7th, 2023, presented by Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to check them out online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or call them at 321-223-7500. I have been your host, Eric Provost, and we will see you back next week for another Recyclist News Roundup.